I never thought I'd see the day where James Charles threw subtle shade at Jeffrey. James leaked a document with some requirements for his employees to follow if they want to work for him. And I honestly don't know how James could even hire anyone at this point because what he requests his employees to do for him is low-key barbaric. Yeah guys, it's pretty insane. We have a lot to cover in today's respill. So make sure to stay tuned to find out why James is shading Jeffrey, why David Dobrik regrets responding to getting cancelled, and why Pete Davidson is in trauma therapy. Dramageddon 3.0, never did I think I'd see the day. So what's the tea? James's ability to keep coming back from getting cancelled time and time again for being a creep is seriously worrying, and yet he's somehow still busy enough to go and employ people and hire interns to help him do his dirty work. Most recently, James had posted a document to his Instagram showing fans what he expects his employees to know about what he hates before employing them. And the document clearly throws shade at Jeffrey. Things James does not like. Black and red, yellow and purple, brown and black, green, pink, yellow. Oof, that colour palette is strongly reminding me of someone. Plain white shirts under jackets, pants that go out at the waist and at the leg and then go out at the ankle, patchwork denim that isn't blue, form-fitting jackets, things that don't make his butt look good, pearl necklaces, Yeezys, tight pants with loose tops, scoop necklines, showing arms, sleeved collared shirts, baggy tops, oversized look, designer track suits. And people are defending this saying, oh no, James just might not like designer track suits. Everybody has preferences. Uh, no. We all know the real reason he doesn't like designer track suits. You cannot tell me that this designer wh doesn't love everything and anything designer. He clearly doesn't like designer track suits because Jeffree Star wears them 24-7. And that colour palette he hates, it's literally all the colours Jeffree Star religiously wears. It's just so super weird. I don't know who would want to work for James Charles at this point, especially after how his treatment to his employees got exposed last year. In 2021, James Charles was sued for wrongfully terminating and mistreating a former employee. According to an article from Law Officers of Man and Elias, it goes on to state, evidence revealed that Charles failed to pay employees over time, engaged in disability discrimination and failed to provide accommodations when needed. Rockleen specifically had been receiving poor treatment and was not getting paid for all the hours she contributed. Allegations also reveal that she worked two different roles for Charles for a total of 12 hours a day, seven days a week. He had even promised her a raise, but that failed to happen too. Although it is uncertain when Rockleen got injured, a former producer claimed she sustained an injury that required emergency medical treatment. It was so severe that she had to take time off work. In response, Charles's claimed to have fired her when she returned from medical leave for not being dedicated to her career. Hmm, so do you think world-renowned employer of the year James Charles was subtly shading Jeffree Star in that leaked document? I don't know who in their right mind would want to work for James Charles anyway, but moving on, David Dobrik wishes that he'd responded differently to his cancellation. According to Jason Nash, who'd recently had an interview with Dave Portnoy. But I think what happened with David... Yours came along a few months later, and I think we were all like, fuck, should have handled it like Portnoy. That's what That's he what said Everybody to me. said, right. you know, fuck, we should have fucking handled it like Portnoy. We should have fucking said something. And um, yeah, it's over now. It's too late. Now, people were commenting on this part of the interview saying things like, curious how he could have gotten ahead of his cancellation because it wasn't exactly diet or light behaviour. Dude was recording a vlog at a party where a girl experienced SA. It's not like he was being mean to a Starbucks employee or something. Someone else had said, you were quiet for two years. Plenty of time to think about what to say. So David Dobrik, for those who need a quick refresher, got cancelled after Business Insider published an article titled, A woman featured on YouTube star David Dobrik's channel says she was by a vlog squad member in 2018, the night they filmed a video about group. The article included commentary from a young woman who appeared in the 2018 video, She Should Not Have Played With Fire, in which she claimed she was by Dom Zaglates. The article also includes quotes from Paytas claiming Dobrik asked Nash to purchase alcohol for the women as they were under 21 and could not purchase it for themselves. Dobrik then went on to post a two and a half minute long video to his podcast channel called Let's Talk. In this video, Dobrik claimed that consent is the heart of his content. He claimed to not agree with some of his previous videos and apologised directly 
lead to Seth Francis. He then went on to address former members of the vlog squad, including Dom Siglates, and stated that he has distanced himself from them as he does not align with their actions and does not stand for misconduct. He finished the video with an apology and promised that things like that wouldn't happen again. David lost heaps of sponsorships after that, and days after, he'd posted another apology video. David started posting like normal again at three months later. Although he said in his podcast since then, he doesn't want to continue doing YouTube forever. Now, obviously, Jason Nash just exposed what David's true thoughts were surrounding getting cancelled last year, and that was mainly that David only really regrets how he responded to getting cancelled. Yikes. So, Pete Davidson is in trauma therapy at the moment after getting dumped by Kim Kardashian, who had gotten her name branded on her chest, alongside tattoos of her kids' names. As we all know, Kanye West was big mad when he found out Pete was proudly boasting about his short-lived relationship with Kim. Kanye had a full-blown adult mantrum where he'd be posting about Kim and their kids and Pete every day on social media. He'd then delete his posts and go on to make more. He'd also allegedly hidden her bushes outside her house. It was intense. It turns out that Kim and Pete recently split up and people now think that their entire relationship was just a PR stunt to move negative attention away from Chloe having a second baby with Tristan. But regardless of all this, Pete has struggled with his mental state for a long time and has been very public about his struggles. In a recent article by Entertainment Weekly, it said, Pete Davidson has been in trauma therapy over Kanye West's online bullying. Kanye recently posted a now-deleted Instagram proclaiming Skeet Davidson dead at 28. It then went on to state, a source tells Pete Davidson has been in trauma therapy in large part due to the rap icon's incessant bullying since April of this year. The attention and negativity coming from Kanye and his antics is a trigger for Pete and he's had to seek out help, the source said. Well, as soon as Kanye found out about Kim and Pete's split, he was one of the first to announce it to all his fans, hoping and praying that this is his chance to get back with Kim. He'd posted a doctored image of a New York Times front page obituary that read, Skeet Davidson dead at age 28. It turns out that the post only got deleted because Kim and Pete both contacted Instagram about the post, which ultimately got it removed. I also find it very interesting that further along in the article it stated that Pete in trauma therapy has nothing to do with his and Kim's split, because um, we all know how Pete reacts when he splits with these major celebrity icons. He gets into a very depressed state. The article had said, meanwhile, a source close to Kardashian confirmed that Davidson's involvement with trauma therapy had nothing to do with their breakup and that she does not tolerate this type of behaviour from Kanye. As for Davidson, he'll be focusing on his career moving forward. He'll next be seen in the summer horror comedy Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. And dating Kim Kardashian was still pretty cool, even with the yay factor. It's unclear as to why Kim and Pete broke up, but yeah, basically everyone on planet Earth believes it has something to do with it deflecting the attention away from Chloe's newborn news, because the announcement of the birth of Chloe's secondborn happened the exact same day as the announcement of Kim's split with Pete. The devil works hard, but Kris Jenner works harder. And of course, Kim uses her breakup news to promote a new product, her collaboration with Beats by Dre called Beats Fit Pro. So what are your thoughts on today's tea? Let me know in the comments.